Uh, we are the largest third party property management company in that space. Um, and if you look uh, here, JC, I just pulled your slides up. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. No worries. Very, very nice slides, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, you can kind of get the next one, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to get there. And if not, there I, I, I right. hopefully said this enough times where I, where I know our story. Um, but no, I, I think, you know, like I said, found in 1986 and kind of rode the wave of what student housing became, uh, largest third party property manager in that space. Uh, and, and my focus specifically has been on the, the multifamily side. So uh, we are the 11th largest apartment management firm in, in the multi-housing sector, uh, according to NMHC. And I'll kind of talk about how we got there. Um, in 2012, 2013, we looked at a company called Greystone and a, a guy named David Hargrove, who was kind of a staple of the uh, apartment industry here in Houston. Uh, we bought his company and uh, they, they kind of gave us a few different asset types, right? They were more heavily focused on the A and B, whereas typically, you know, from 1986 prior, we were really a rehab group, really focused on the B and C assets. Not to say that we didn't have any A assets, but, you know, groups around town really knew us as a group that could come in and reposition your asset from a rehab standpoint. So David kind of gave us the ability to jump in a few different other asset uh, classes. And so from 2012 to really, January of 2020, we were around the 15,000 uh, unit range, really primarily based in, in Texas. So really your, your major MSAs looking at San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Houston, uh, had a pretty good presence in Corpus Christi for a while. And then a lot of your secondary and tertiary markets across the, across the, uh, the state. So um, I mentioned January uh, of this year, really just to to mention that we have uh, acquired a platform uh, based out of Phoenix, Arizona um, named Shelton and, and they've kind of come on board with us. And so that's really expanded our presence into the, the Southwest market. Um, you know, we, Ryan McGrath bought his father, uh, Mike McGrath out about two years ago. And with that um, partnered with a kind of an LP in some ways with a, a private equity firm based out of New York called Trilantic. And they've kind of opened up uh, our ability to, to grow both organically, but also, you know, looking at, at buying other management platforms across the country. So we identified the group in the Southwest. We're looking at groups in the Southeast and, and hopefully adding uh, to our portfolio in, in that capacity. So, you know, as we look forward for the growth of the company, obviously, you know, the student is a, a major focus of ours, um, but really growing our multifamily presence uh, both here in Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, but but also nationally to where we we have the ability to, to follow our uh, our clients wherever they want to go. Um, for us, it's it's really not about being the biggest. Um, we don't, you know, as it stands today, counting our student and multifamily platform, we're about seventy thousand units. Um, you know, thirty thousand on the conventional platform, and roughly forty, a little over forty on the on the student side. So you know, we, we want to be somewhere in the, you know, 100, 100 plus range, hopefully by the end of the year. And, and again, it's, it's not to, to be the gray stars of the world, but, you know, we, we want to be able to service our clients anywhere they, they want to go. And, you know, we tell people all the time, Stephen and I, and, and, you know, our team, you know, it's, it's really about, you know, maintaining relationships. And I, and I hope that Dustin and, and Hayden can, can, uh, can speak on that behalf, you know, anytime they, they need anything or have a question, Eric and, and Stephen and I are always available to, to help in any way that we can. So that's really, you know, asset living now has kind of taken asset plus and asset campus housing and it's rebranded to asset living. Uh, much like myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm JC Reeves, but um, my real name is John Clay Reeves. We answer to anything. So you call us Asset Plus, Asset Campus, Asset Living, we, uh, we'll find a way to, to answer you. So that's just a little bit of background on, on myself. Um, you know, like I said, my, my main function is really growing our multifamily platform uh, from a more organic standpoint, you know, reaching out to groups and, and trying to help them on evaluations of assets and with their performance and underwriting and, you know, really help them grow in, in that area. So that's, that's my main focus, a little background about our company um, and really looking forward to, to diving into some of your questions. Okay. 
Um, here, let me unmute Aiden as well. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of start off with one of the questions, uh, JC. So, you know, I think especially, well, for anybody that's involved in multifamily at all uh, right now, um, you know, everybody's curious about how collections are and, and how all that's going, you know, March versus April. Uh, I know on a, on a personal level and the, the deals I'm involved in, at least from a um, GP standpoint, um, you know, we have, most of our deals are, are tracking to, uh, to our March collections, you know, for the most part we do have, um, you know, we had uh, kind of a, a deal that's struggled some and, and it's, you know, still, still kind of struggling, but the, the rest of them are pretty much on par with March and you guys are all over the country. You're, uh, in, in student housing and, you know, in a bunch of different things. So very, yeah. Curious to see what, what things look like for you guys right now, March versus April collections. Yeah. I, I think for us, you know, what we've seen across both platforms is, you know, we're within one or two percentage points of, of where we should be. Um, you know, for us, our online payment portals, they've been set up for, for quite some time now. And tech has really been a big focus for us, both on the student side and, and the multifamily side. So, you know, much as everybody in the space has really transitioned into going online and doing things virtually, I mean, that, that's been part of our, our platform for, you know, quite a while. Um, we've even had, you know, some owners that have waived credit card processing fees uh, in order to, you know, try and help with the collections for those that are looking to pay with credit cards. And, you know, I think initially the industry as a whole was really worried about April. Um, and, you know, I think we've been presently surprised. And NMHC put out, a, uh, put out an article today that one third of, of the groups were down. But, you know, for us, again, I think we're with one or two percentage points of, of where we thought we would be. I think a better indication uh, of what, you know, the impact of, of COVID will be, you know, is looking towards May and June as unemployment employment numbers continue to, to rise. And so, you know, we're really focused on, on trying to make sure that we're doing everything in, in our power to, you know, um, get, get collections on a, on a stabilized basis for our ownership groups. Awesome. Yeah. So, sounds good. Yeah. I'm, I personally, yeah, I think everybody's curious about May and, and June as well. So we'll see, hopefully this thing doesn't drag on too long, but we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Is that kind of that one or two percent below expectations? Is that uh, kind of across the board, or you know, are is there some specific areas that maybe are even below that or worse than that that you're that you're noticing? You know, I think again, it's it's somewhat early to tell nationally. I think you know, and that that kind of can go into you know a, a couple of other questions, but you know, I, I think every asset is different and every submarket within every area is different, right? I mean, depending on what the demand drivers are and, and really what, you know, that asset is, you know, from a tenant standpoint, what, what that asset looks like is it's really depending upon how that asset is faring. So, you know, our portfolio, we, again, we've been, you know, very happy with where we are. Um, and, and so, you know, we're, we're pushing hard for May and June and, and to make sure that we're, we're going to, continue to, to see to see those numbers stay at those levels. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, it, so, you know, our, you know, you said everything was within, you know, one or 2%. Um, are you seeing, um, well, let's see. Uh, any differences between, you know, A, B, and C, or is every, everything still within that one or 2%? You know, I, again, I, I think those that their economic drivers have, have been hit the hardest are those that are faring, you know, uh, the worst right now. I mean, if we're, if we're looking at it, you know, it's those, those assets that are, are heavily retail and heavily restaurant focused are, are those that have have struggled um, and you know we're doing everything we can to work with those tenants and and make sure that you know we're providing the best service for them uh, and continuing to, to try and help them through this process but I, I can't I can't really you know right now say hey a assets B assets or C assets you know I think it would be all speculation at this point and, and we'll have a better you know indication of what it looks like in, in a couple of months um, but 
you know, a, again, for us, I think the, the biggest indicator is really looking at what are the, the drivers, the demand drivers for that particular asset. And if it is, you know, retail and, and restaurant and, you know, all of the, all of the assets and all of the, you know, everything that everyone knows in our industry ha has struggled. Those are, those are the assets that are, that are getting hit hard. Gotcha. Okay. Can't, yeah. you, can't you look at those as just unoccupied for the time that they are? And kind Sorry, of take I'm them? having trouble hearing you. Can't you look at that as just being unoccupied property for the time when the accounting comes into due? There's a couple different ways at it. Um, you know, and each ownership group has their own way that they, they want it done. So, um, but yeah, it obviously is, is one way at it for sure. Um, to follow to follow that up, um, are there any, you know, sort of incentives or um, you know, kind of workarounds that you're doing with tenants to kind of help them get through this period? You know, I, that's a tough question. I, I think, you know, we have so many owners that, that want to do different things uh, across their portfolio, but as a company, you know, we're trying to be as helpful as possible to our tenants. I mean, we're keeping an open line of communication. The resident has been financially impacted uh, due to COVID or the coronavirus, you know, they're calling the office and, and we're doing everything in our power we can to work with them through this challenging time. So, you know, in, in terms of incentives, incentives for paying, I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's, they, they have a lease and, and they should be paying those leases, you know, but, you know, we, we also understand the challenges that, that many Americans are going through right now. Um, and both from a local, you know, here in Houston, you, you also have the oil and gas crisis going on. So, that obviously it has impacted some assets as well, but, but you know, by and large, we're doing everything that we can to work with our tenants to make sure that they're, you know, they they feel comfortable and they know that we're we're really in their corner trying to help them. Can you can you be more specific about what you're doing with your tenants? You know, so what we what we've done is you know, in a lot of our assets you know, here in the multifamily sector, we've, we've gone to no contact offices. Uh, you know, we've really tried to make sure that, you know, virtual tours and, you know, we're, we have some, some sites that are doing, you know, virtual bingo and just trying to continue to foster relationships with, with those tenants and, and make sure that we're staying in contact with them. You know, right now it's, it's hard to do a lot of events on property or, or you know, anything of that nature with social distancing and, and what have you, but, you know, we're doing anything and everything that, that you can think of to just maintain relationships and foster relationships with those tenants. Do you see a lot of ownership groups, um, you know, working with tenants that specifically lost their jobs as a result of this? Yeah, you know, I think, again, it's, it's very specific. You, you have, you know, in, in our world with, with 70,000 units and the amount of clients that we have, you know, every ownership group handles things very differently. And so you've got groups that, you know, obviously are, are wanting to work with us and be able to work with tenants. And you have those that are still trying to, to figure it out. And, you know, it, it sounds like I'm, I'm trying to dance around these questions, but in, in all it's, it's really hard right now in April to, to give you a lot of straight answers and, and a lot of these things. I think, you know, May and June, we, we will have a better understanding as a, you know, as a management group and, and really across the country, we'll have a much better um, understanding of, of what's going on. So we're, we're hoping that, you know, we can get those management groups to, to work with us and work with the tenants as best as possible. Uh, so Lisa, Lisa had a question regarding CapEx. Are you guys, is it on a case by case basis in terms of your CapEx or are you, are you guys halting or are you just moving forward business as usual? What are you doing CapEx wise? It is truthfully a case by case basis. So, you know, owners are realizing with the uncertainty that they're looking to make certain cuts in certain areas. And obviously the, the easiest initial area in some cases is CapEx. So some CapEx items have been for a later date. Um, discretionary spend 
it, you know, that's every, what everyone is, is looking at. So cutting back as much as they can where they can uh, is important. So I wouldn't say that all CapEx items ha have been paused by any means, but you know, those that are, are not extremely necessary right now definitely have hit the pause button. And, and not to say that they're not gonna be done, it's just, again, trying to evaluate what's going on and, and really um, get a better gauge as to, to how to, you know, do that at a later date. Um, are you guys still doing like regular routine maintenance or is it switched to pretty much totally emergency stuff? Yeah, so again, if you're looking at what we're doing both on a leasing and a maintenance side, from a maintenance perspective, you know, we're currently only handling emergency orders. So, you know, those that involve fire, flooding, uh, larger appliance malfunctions, um, heating, cooling, you know, uh, we are treating certain items like washer and dryer up to 72 hours, you know, that those things we're, we're trying to come in and fix. And, and when we're doing, you know, it's, it's obviously trying to make sure that our maintenance team is, is cleaning, you know, everything possible, every door handle they touch, every item they touch, you know, coming in with masks and, and gloves and, and really trying to make sure that the tenant feels safe. Um, you know, and, and those items that are, are not major, um, you know, we, we've gotten, creative and, and tried to, you know, get on phone calls and walk a tenant through how they might fix the, the certain issue or even do video when we can um, as to how, you know, a maintenance issue can be resolved if it's not an emergency. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's see. So, and I know you're the uh, conventional guy, so yeah, I don't know how much it on the student housing uh, you you know, but how you are you able to talk about you know how your how the student housing side is doing for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I can touch on the conversations that I have. You know, my my, my boss Stephen Mitchell is um, he, he's heavily focused on our student side, so he and I actually have have stayed in constant communication as well as you know our uh, the rest of our team. But all in all, as well as the rest of you know the off campus competitors. I think we're doing well. Um, there's been a, there's been less hysteria from residents, and, and you know, in that world, you have a guarantor a lot of times on your on your lease. So, um, you know, across the board, there's you know, it's been it's been far less than what we expected. Um, you know, we've collected a, a significant amount of April rent payments uh, above what many in the industry anticipated would happen um, due to those students not being on campus, and so. You know the current operational challenges and issues you know from an operation standpoint there's really not a lot of difference that we see in the multifamily and the in the student side in terms of you know the challenges that we're facing right now um, you know we found ways to work within those constraints and, and still take care of our residents as best we can so um, from, from a student perspective you know again i think we've been presently surprised with with how collections have been this month just due to the fact that a, a large majority of of those students are, are not on campus. You, you listen to different studies and, and some say that it's, you know, as high as 60% um, in certain areas that, that have gone and others say 60% have stayed. So, um, you know, it, it's really, it, it's really dependent, I think, on the market and, and where the, you know, where the particular asset is located um, on the student front. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I'm going through one of the questions that that Jeff had, um, he just asked about rent compression. I'll, I'll, you know, if you want to touch on it more, you can. I can speak uh, on, on, I guess my uh, portfolio. So we're, um, you know, frankly, uh, Jeff, we've, uh, you know, most of the deals we've collected, um, most of what we were expecting, uh, we're on track with. You know, with uh, a, you know, our April collections are on track for March for the most part, and uh, so we're we're doing well from that perspective. You know, it, it's not going to be a a kick out you know situation, um, and you know, uh, it's you know not allowed to do that. But um, you know, we're trying to you know, uh, I don't have a specific case or whatever, but um, you know, we're working with people in general. But like I said, we. Um, on most of our, you know, uh, properties that tend to collect well, you know, we have, we have our one that 
has tough collecting, but everything else is, you know, in the tracking to March. Um, so we haven't really had any issues. Um, I'm curious to see what I don't, you know, I don't know what May will look like though. May, may, you know, we, we may have uh, issues there. I don't know, but uh, so far, at least for us, we're, we're uh, doing okay. But if we have some people that are having trouble, then you know, we're working on case by case basis. Yeah, I would agree. And, and looking at Jeffrey's question, you know, like ninety nine percent. That's that's fairly unrealistic on a on a monthly basis anyway. So to say I'm within one or two percentage points of where we should be, it, it's not by by no means are we saying that you know we're we're collecting rent one hundred percent across the board. That's just not the case. But you know, depending on the asset classes, I, I think as scrolling down to what Tyler mentioned, you know, I, I would completely agree that you know. With the A and B assets, you know, we receive, you know, really, really good um, collections on, on those fronts. And, and not to say that we haven't on some of our C assets, we absolutely have. It's just, again, it's, it's very market specific and it, it really just depends on on uh, how that asset is positioned in, in the market. Okay. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, you know, if you want to jump in, you're welcome to. Uh, Lisa had a question about the report cases of, of coronavirus. I, I don't know of any at, at any of the properties we're involved in. Um, I, you know, um, so I, I guess I can't really speak to that, but um, so, yeah. Uh, and then another question uh, from uh, Yufan is how do you, foresee COVID-19 changing the multifamily business in the future. Um, JC, if you want to hop on that, or I, I'd have to think about that for a minute, but I'm happy to uh, take a swing at it. That's a, that's a packed question there. So. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think, I think there's a lot that, that can go into that. And I think, you know, sure. truthfully, the, the world will, will We'll definitely see changes, uh, not just the multifamily sector. And I had this conversation with Hayden and, and Dustin last week. I, I think that, you know, when you're looking at different asset types, whether, you know, just to kind of start away from the multifamily sector, you know, being on calls with the CBREs, the NKFs, the Bricadias, and, you know, Cushman Wakefields of the world. I, I think, you know, everyone understands the impact this will have on the retail sector. Um, e commerce has, you know, the retail sector has been getting hard for quite some time. Um, office, we, we assume that there's going to be a, a large impact there as well, um, just due to the nature of people, you know, realizing that, that working from home isn't that bad. They can still get a lot of, of things done that they, they had originally thought, you know, needed to be in an office for. Industrial world will, will do very well on the backside of this with e-commerce looking for warehouse spaces and, and things of that nature. But as you look to the multifamily world, you know, I think changes that we're going to see is going to be a lot on the, side. you know, everyone will always need a place to live. Um, you know, so I'm still extremely bullish on, on our industry as a whole um, and think we will far, you know, way better than, than most asset groups uh, or asset types rather. But, you know, for us, you know, this, the student sector has, has always been one to two years ahead of where, uh, you know, the multifamily world is in, in terms of a, a technology standpoint. And so, you know, virtual tours and, and online leases and that, that has been in play, you know, for, for 10 plus years um, in, in that world. You know, in, in the student side, we're, we, we've seen virtual reality, um, VR, where, where people will come in and put a headset on and and be able to kind of walk the unit on a new development project that isn't even off the ground yet. So, you know, in the student world, we're leasing properties usually a year in advance. So we'll have August until the August to the entire building. So we're, you know, in the in the market on campus trying to, you know, get students to, to come in and and visit the the area that we've designated as our leasing office, which sometimes downtown or you know, can be a trailer on site, but, you know, those students are coming in and they're putting on these, these virtual, you know, reality headsets and, and they're getting to see what the, what the uh, layout of the apartment will be. And so, you know, I think we're going to see a, a large shift in the tech space in our industry um, and what that looks like, 
you know, it's, it's all speculation right now, but I, I think for us trying to make sure that we are, you know, staying, staying relative and, and staying, you know, in, engaged as to what those demand drivers are. And so, you know, as we look at our student space, you know, at any time, 132,000 beds, you've got a large portfolio and you hope that, you know, some of those tenants will transition into your multifamily uh, units when they graduate. So for the next five, 10 years, those students that were, you know, leasing at one of your properties on the student side now has the ability to move to Houston, move to Dallas, move to Miami, move to Orlando, Atlanta, Phoenix, and stay now with one of your assets there. And so they're looking for the same level of service, same level of technology that they had, and also, you know, from an amenity standpoint, looking, you know, I think co-living is going to be, excuse me, a space that will see a lot of growth going forward, um, you know, and, and we're, we're pretty, you know, bullish on, on the fact that, you know, we, we really think that you're going to start seeing smaller spaces in some areas where students are used to having a small space in college. They don't mind, you know, they don't want to pay $1,600 for one bedroom in downtown Houston you know, for a thousand square feet or 700 square feet. I mean, they don't mind having 350 square feet. They just want to live the nice, new, cool asset. And so, you know, for us, it's really, how do we stay ahead of, of the curve and make sure that we're relevant to those tenants that are looking for spaces as they're coming out of college, um, into, you know, into their early working careers. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, multi, you know, housing's a staple. It's, food, water, shelter. So, you know, I, I don't, it, there's a bunch of nuances that'll change, but, uh, but, you know, in, at the end of the day, every needs a place to live. So, um, are you, and I don't remember if you mentioned this, JC, are most of your leasing offices are, you're closed to the public and you're doing, you know, over. Yeah, so all of our, years. all of our leasing offices are, are, are closed. So we, we've got no contact offices. Employees are trying to, to stay six feet away from one another, to can, you know, to maintain social distancing. Uh, you know, we, we have some, some tenants that still, you know, are, are not practicing much like the rest of the, the country, you know, some of the rules and guidelines when that happens, we just have to tell them, you know, look, we're, we're trying to, to make sure we're, we're following the guidelines of CDC and, and maintaining social distancing and, and you know, we'll have conversations with them, but it, it just won't, you know, it's not, you know, the face-to-face person-person communication that, you know, everybody is used to. So it's definitely a new, um, some new changes in, in the industry, but, you know, by and large, I think both, you know, both platforms and, and really our competitors are, are doing a good job. And, and one thing that's been nice is both on the student front and the multifamily front, you know, our competitors have been, fairly open as to what they're doing and, you know, uh, make, making sure that a, as an industry, we're, we're tackling this pandemic together. So uh, that's been, that's been definitely nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, it, one thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know if you, cause you're not on the student housing side, do you know how, do you know how you guys are preparing for the fall? Obviously you're a lot more online on the student side than, maybe conventional, but, um, I, I, you know, I guess, how are you guys preparing for the fall? And then, you know, do you, if you can speak to any of that. Yeah. So we're continuing to pre-lease for the fall move-ins and, you know, as we have in the past, so not much has changed there in terms of, of what we're looking at, you know, for the fall, but our offices are, are locked and we've added even more in, emphasis on social media platforms and, you know, so the Instagrams, the Snapchats, the TikToks, you know, all the, the kind of new and hip, you know, uh, social media platforms, we, we've really added emphasis there. Um, virtual tours, obviously, are, are, you know, expanding more and more and, and really trying to dive into that. We're offering, you know, walkthroughs uh, in the building and, and even, you know, both on the multifamily and student side, we're, you know, lock boxes, putting lock boxes in on some of our model units. That way they can you know, a prospective tenant can have the ability to still walk the unit. Um, and so that's been been something that we've done. And, and from an operational standpoint, you know, we're still working with our vendors. Um, in the student sector, you have turn. And, and so that's the, the big major difference. You've got two weeks to turn, you know, three, 400 beds on a property. And so we're still working with all of our vendors right now to, 
to make sure that we're on schedule for those. And, and until we hear something from, from universities or, you know, um, that things have changed, we're going to, we're going to operate as business as usual for right now on that front. Okay. Uh, Ed was asking about what you guys are doing as far as leasing traffic, you know, what, you know, basically just what are you guys doing to bring in traffic and what online resources are you guys, you know, what's most effective for you guys? So again, online, I mean, you know, we've, we've been doing the online stuff for, for quite some time, whether that's, you know, using your apartments.com, your rent paths, your, you know, all of those avenues, but, but more importantly, it's, it's really been about, you know, I think social media is coming into play for us right now on a large scale and, and really just follow up and, and trying to reach out and, and market in a way that we haven't, you know, not, not that we haven't in the past, but just more aggressive, taking some of our aggressive marketing tactics and, and really trying to, to go out and find tenants and, and really, you know, focus on that has been important for us. Um, you know, any, anything out of the box, not really, um, you know, it's, it's just making sure that our follow up and, and, and what we're doing across, you know, the board is, is consistent and, and making sure that we're, we're trying to, again, you know, I think a, a large focus for us right now is on the renewal side um, and making sure that, you know, our relationships with our tenants and, and their understanding that they have a safe place to live right now is very important. And so we've seen a spike in our renewal numbers um, which is, has definitely been a plus for us, for sure. I think Doug had a good question, too. He said, a uh, popular DFW area concession for unemployed tenants seems to be half rent payments for four months and catching up when things kind of get back to normal. Um, and just to get your opinion on that. And um, I'd also add to that, you know, um, do you think that's going to be more common moving forward should this get worse? Um, or as property owners are going to feel the pinch, you know, you know, as things progress, are they going to stop doing stuff like that because they have their own obligations and liabilities too? Yeah, look, I, I think, you know, again, we're, we're a third party property manager, so we're at the mercy of our ownership groups. And, 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 and so, you know, absolutely. I mean, if an ownership group wants to come to us and say half a rent payment for up to four months, by all means, we're, we are absolutely up for that. And, and, you know, we're really just taking the the guide and, and really making sure that, you know, as a third party property manager, we have to first service our clients and, and our tenants and, and make sure that we're, you know, fostering relationships between both sides of it. So it's really hard to say, hey, you know, we're obviously making suggestions to those, you know, to our clients as to what we think is is best. But at the end of the day, I mean, they're, they're on the line and they're having to cover debt services on, on their assets. And so, to your point, I mean, as this tightens up, the groups get less inclined to offer incentives or less inclined to offer concessions in certain areas. That's a real possibility. And I think, you know, why we haven't seen it rolled out significantly up to this point is, is just due to the uncertainty of what, you know, the timeline looks like uh, on this pandemic. So, you know, if it's April 30th, things go back to normal, then, you know, I think people will obviously be, you know, they'll be more, more apt to kind of work with, with tenants on a, on a case by case basis. Um, but, you know, that being said, if, if we're looking at June or July, then, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's the ownership groups money that is on the line and, and we've got to do the best that we can to, to work within their parameters and, and make sure that we're, we're doing everything in our power to, to keep those guys focused and, and keep our tenants, you know, keep occupancy high and, and make sure that, you know, our renewals are staying, High, but outside of that, we're, we've got to really make sure that we're doing everything we can for our, for our tenant base and for our, our clients. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to comment on that Jeff had a statement um, about specific discount offers and all that. One thing that, that we're doing, and I, you know, sounds like JC, you guys might do it on a case by case basis, but. Um, we are doing um, we're we're doing drawing. So if people pay by the first, uh, we'll do a we did a drawing and I think for a few hundred dollars off or different gift cards or different things like that. Um, we're also buying um, for uh, all of our residents in in Abilene, for instance. We're buying uh, a large pizza per unit. 
um, you know, it, you know, it's not a lot of money. Um, you know, we're, we, I, uh, we negotiated a pretty good deal, I think, but, um, but you know, not, it's not a ton of money, but it's just kind of, a, a one of my partners put it, you know, it, it's just a sign of good faith and, Hey, we're giving you something and, you know, we're sorry, you know, it's a bad situation. We're trying to make it a little bit better. Um, and, you know, no, no strings attached or anything like that, but, you know, just trying to show that we care. So. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think Jester's in good faith right now, both from an ownership level and from a, a you know, a property management standpoint are, are, are vital, you know, and, and making sure that those tenants feel that, you know, it's not just a, a rent check and, you know, it's much more than that. It is, you know, it's, it's only going to ensure that, you know, they leave good reviews and, and maybe they, they sign their renewal and, and things of that nature. And at the end of the day, to your point, it's not, it's not overly expensive to, to buy large pizzas for your, for your tenants, but they feel as if they matter. And so I think, you know, again, we, we do have ownership groups that are, that are putting some of those practices into place. And, you know, when, again, when, when they, when our ownership group, wants to get creative we absolutely will get creative but you know by the end at the end of the day we're you know it's it's our job to make sure that we're we're providing value for those guys and so we've got to do all we can and, and make sure that we're following their guidelines um it, let's see there is one question and i don't you you may not know the answer jc but uh, do you know with, I guess, are our students basically be able, are they able to break their leases given all of this? I, like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. So, but. Yeah, I, I don't think to this point that they have that ability. So, you know, if you think about it in, in all student assets, you know, a vast majority of the students go to, go to school August to May but they're paying, you know, June and July as well. And so this, this kind of falls within that category within a contract. I, I don't know specifically the answer there as that, again, you know, my focus is on the multifamily side, but I, I don't think, um, and I very well could be wrong, but I, I don't think that's the case at this point. Gotcha. Have you heard by any chance by any of your clients if they're, they're getting more active or if they're kind of waiting seeing how things play out before they move forward? I think, you know, in, in the vast majority of our clients have taken a pencils down approach. And so, you know, that they, they obviously, I think 2020 for everybody was, you know, a year that 95% of the groups were extremely excited about, you know, everyone thought the multifamily sector was, was booming and, you know, there's going to be real opportunity to buy deals. And, you know, I, I mean, we've seen cap rates suppress the levels that, you know, in certain areas that, you know, you, you couldn't believe just due to the demand uh, of, of the, the multifamily sector. Um, you know, every group that I'm talking to, by and large, is kind of saying, you know, we're really just, just taking a step back right now. It's not that we're not looking. It's not that we're, you know, we're, we're getting skittish of, of the multifamily world. We're really just trying to figure out, you know, what we're going to do, how we're going to handle this, both from a personal standpoint, but also from a, a business plan standpoint. We do, however, have groups that have reached out and said, you know, look, by all means, we are active. We, we have cash to buy deals. And, you know, there's groups that if the right deal came across their desk today, they, they would have the ability to tackle it. And I think most groups are really trying to figure out how lenders are going to handle this and really what that looks like. You know, I mean, interest rates are low right now, but, you know, I, I think, you know, from a, when you're looking at, the interest rate level. I, mean, I, I would argue that some some lenders are quoting prices higher than they were two months ago, uh, just due to the nature of what what they're seeing. So, you know, it's interesting to to really get a feel for what every client is thinking and, and really what they're what they're looking at. But by and large, yes, I, I would say that most groups have taken a pencils down approach for now and just trying to reevaluate what it looks like. You know, 30, 60 days. I think three and Q4 of this year are going to be you know, extremely active and groups are really going to try and push hard to get deals done, uh, especially Q4, you know, depending on how the election goes. I think, you know, as a country, we have the ability to, to you know, really 
really see, you know, everything kind of get back to, to a more stabilized basis. And, and that would be, you know, what I would look for is Q4 really being the turnaround point. Well, and, and to the point about pencils down and all that, what's, what's interesting, you know, for, for you guys, you know, how do, how do you put a performance together right now? You know, what, what does yeah. that look like? Do you, you know, are you zero in, income increase for year one or, or does it go down? I mean, I don't, you know. Yeah. Look, and, and, and to be completely transparent and, and, and candor, I mean, that's, that's something we're evaluating, you know, as we speak, I, I think, you know, Eric and Steven and I have had conversations about what that looks like. And, you know, we've been talking with our groups as to what, you know, their performance will look like and, and how they, they're going to evaluate deals. And that, I think be the most interesting thing on the backside and really the groups that figure it are, are going to be the groups that, that have the ability to take down a lot of deals. Um, you know, you know, I think, you know, for you guys, right. I mean, it's, it's still, how, how do we, how do we, how do we do this? How do we look at a T12 and, and, and a rent roll and, and really figure out what we're going to dial in here. So it's a, it's definitely going to be something that's going to evolve and I'll be interested to see how groups are handling it. My, my guess is that we'll kind of take a look and, and, you know, as we hear from other groups as to what they're doing, you know, our models are strictly a, um, you know, value add to our clients. So Eric is underwriting, you know, all day, every day and, and putting together performance for, for our clients in order that they have the, the ability to give their best evaluation from an OPEX standpoint, especially. Um, we do obviously plug in valuations and, and you know, loans and CapEx projects and all, all of that. But at the end of the day, most groups want from us the OPEX side of things. So, you know, we, we they all have their own return metrics, you know, and, and we try and find deals that fit those return metrics within our model to send out. But, you know, I, I think every group has their own, you know, model and, and they'll plug in their own numbers accordingly, but they just want to know what, what will this property operate for. And so, you know, that's really what we're, we're providing. Um, John, John had a question about the increase in price and you guys are, you know, you, you guys don't, own, I think you're hundred percent third party. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll field the question. Um, I would, yeah, I would, I'd say that, um, you know, prices certainly did, you know, jump up with, with lower interest rates. Um, you know, there's a lot of different sponsors on the, on the phone and, you know, so I, I look at, um, assumption deals and I look at new loans and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, interest rates and then the amount of IO that we get can really kind of pump up the price some for sure. So, um, you know, we had, I remember, you know, a few weeks ago uh, before when everything was more normal, <laughs> uh, you know, we were evaluating a lot of deals and, you know, we were getting quotes in, in the mid three range and then a day or two later, we got reading quotes between four and a half and five, and you know, oh my gosh, that completely tanked the deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, the interest rates play a, a big part. And if you were on Mark Dotzer's uh, talk yesterday, he foresees that their uh, interest rates are going to be low, you know, for a very long time, and he thinks cap rates are going to be low for a very long time. Yeah, there were uh, there were like three or four thousand people on the call yesterday yeah and, and I'll, I'll just add to that just a just a tick from what we kind of saw prior to the pandemic and you know i think you know a lot a lot of foreign investors um coming into the united states obviously has has driven you know the price and, and a lot of 1031 money um pouring into the market and you see california you know a group you know an area a region that has been used to three percent cap rates will gladly come to Texas for a four or four and a quarter. And so, you know, as rent control passed out in California, coupled with, you know, the fact that Germany for, for quite some time and, and other parts of the country had, you know, negative, negative uh, 10 year treasury bonds. And, and so, you know, I think we saw a lot of, a lot of foreign capital and a lot of California money pour into Texas, which, which drove the price uh, increase here in Houston, Dallas, you know, San Antonio and especially Austin. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, trying to think. Of, I don't. I don't know if I had. Does anyone else have any other questions? Did you? Do you have any, Hayden? Any more? Yeah, I got a quick question. Are you seeing a lot of um, lease renewals at the like previous year's rate, or maybe even a discount um, from that? Yeah, so we're we're not really pushing hard right now on uh, on increasing rates, and you know, which is a, a question that you, you know, when we can, absolutely. But I think everyone right now is focused on occupancy and, and making sure that you know renewals stay high and occupancy stays high right now. And so, yeah, at, at, when we can on a renewal basis, we're really just trying to to keep rent as it is. You know, really not pushing there. Um, obviously, not trying to drop. Um, but, you know, again, on a case by case basis, it, it really just depends on the current asset. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to work with our tenants and, and our clients to, to ensure the best possible outcome through this, through this tough time. We, uh, Hayden, we had, uh, we had quite a few, and not a ton, it, it's a smaller property, it's a little under hundred units. And, uh, we had about, we had 10 leases you know, coming up and, and, uh, we renewed, I, I don't know if we renewed all of them yet, but uh, we, I think we renewed eight of them and, and we brought, I believe pretty much all of them, you know, up to market, um, uh, which I honestly, I was, you know, I was, I was kind of a little surprised about, but, um, but anyway, so, you know, to, to your point, you know, people, I think, you know, you might see a, a lot more renewal coming up or, um, or at least people trying to extend their leases to figure out what this whole thing looks like. So, right. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I mean, if you have the ability to push, you absolutely, you know, right. March, April, May, June are, are the months to do so. Uh, it's just very, very poor timing in, in this, uh, in this crisis. You know, I, I think most of us wish that it would have been uh, November, December, January. Um, right. And, and we're going to look to the spring and summer as, as kind of some relief, but that's not the nature of uh, this virus. So we're doing what we can. Do you think even after things kind of get back to normal, there's still going to be a bit of a lag uh, from property owners and management companies giving tenants a bit of a grace period, knowing what they just went through? Yes, yes, and no. Right. I mean, I, I think yeah. I mean, I, I do. I think there will be there will be a lag in, as to what you know what goes on within the industry, it's really going to, it's really going to depend on, on how the rest of the economy is doing. You know, I, I think again, Houston is, it's tough in the fact that we're, we're facing this at the same time that Saudi Arabia and Russia have continued to, to drive prices and um, down and, you know, the demand for oil just isn't there without people, you know, um, driving. And, and so it's, that, that's obviously Houston, you know, medical, well, the, the medical world is 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 great here, and, and it's continued to grow. And TMC three is is going to be a huge addition to the Houston area. But you know, obviously, oil and gas is is definitely a big uh, a big aspect of, of what this uh, this area really. I mean, from a demand driver standpoint, it's you know it's heavily focused on the oil and gas industry. So time tough, but you know, I think you know we look the ebbs and flows of the oil and gas industry happen fairly frequently. So. You know, we saw it in 2016, and, and Houston's been through through quite quite some troubles with with Harvey and, and other natural disasters. Um, you know, so it, it's made it out of all of that, and, and there's no reason that it won't do that again. But um, yeah, I just think I think it really just depends. But there absolutely could be some lag time there. Okay, awesome. Uh, does does anyone have any other questions? Had a stream of them there. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't think of any other questions. Uh, I don't know if you had any more, Aiden. Yeah, no, not that I can think of. Uh, okay. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, really appreciate your time, JC. Man, it's awesome. And um, yeah, I look forward to uh, yeah keeping up the conversation with you, and uh, hope everything goes well for you guys and around the country with your different assets and uh, hopefully um, you know hopefully oil will bounce back for you guys so uh, you know Houston 
man, Houston's got to be one of the most resilient cities. <laughs> we do our best. It's a lot of people from Louisiana, you know, so we, we like to we like to fight pretty hard. All right. <laughs> yeah. so, I posted cool. my my email address in the in, in the group chat just for anybody that might have any questions and, and want to get more specific over over certain things. Feel free to to reach out, ask questions, and and I'll obviously give give an answer as best as I can. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. Appreciate uh. Appreciate everybody's time. Uh, have a nice evening. Thank you.